Now, 2006. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me just go ahead and jump right, Let's right, let me go ahead and jump right to it. Settle in. Bring it in. Now, I heard, now I don't know if this is true or not. I heard they slipped a picture under all the, like the players' doors of me doing a lights out dance. So that's where, when we lost, where the whole team was doing the lights, the lights out dance. So I think that's when you know, Roosevelt Coleman and, and Vincent Ward, which, by the way, we're, I'm good with everybody now. Richard Seymour, all, those are my guys. But at the time. I, was Big Vegas guy now, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, at the time, I, I, I don't think I've never been so pissed off before in my <laughs> life, right? Because it was, it was, you know, it was for, for me. It was, it was coordinated. It was, it was like it was like one or two yeah. guys. I looked over and half the sidelines were doing. It. I'm like, God, everybody was doing it, but Tom, I think. Tom and, doesn't uh, do that. He yeah. doesn't do it. But um, it, you know, it was crazy, man. I, I, when you get away from the game, you you start to appreciate those times a lot more. And the further, further away you get, you, you remember the locker room, and then you remember the battles, even the ones that you lost. We got, you know, we got kicked out the playoffs twice, right, by by the Patriots. But at the time, you're like, ah, oh, I pissed off. But man, you're like, hold on, man, I, I had a couple sacks against Tom Brady in, you know, championship games. I, you know, had big games in, in AFC championship games and so forth. So you just you you reflect in those times, you appreciate them more. That did, year, did though, get, that good. They get the dance right. Were they doing it right? Like you look over. No, they did it pretty good. Oh, Bell's Hobbs guy. <laughs> the best was Phil Rivers. You sorry ass corner. Be so, yeah, that was Hobbs. That was like sorry ass corner Hobbs. in the league. Well, oh, you man. know what yeah. happened with that? I didn't see it because my head was down. You know, yeah. we just lost. I'm I'm crushed, right? And I look over to the middle of the field, and Phil Rivers and LT <laughs> is in the middle, about to throw down, about to get into a real fight. And that's when I got up and realized, oh, it's something went down. I didn't know that they did it fully until after the game when uh, local news. That's when I really found out how many of them did it. And they were yelling in the hallway. I remember that. They were screaming lights out outside oh, their locker I, look, room. Like, I remember, like, yeah, Roosevelt Coleman and all these guys. Were like, lights out. I said, oh, man. Vrabel. Vrabel. Vrabel oh, right. guy like screaming yeah, lights out. Right. Yeah. He was one of those guys. I, I still think it's a sensitive topic with LaDainian Tomlinson a little bit. You mentioned that, that he was out there ready to throw down. I don't. I don't think he likes talking about that. Well, I remember carried, a few years ago over. seeing him at the Super Bowl, yeah. and he's like, we're not going there. It's like, okay. We're not well, going yeah, to the Jets, too, it. though. Like, and then Rex got him going on the Patriot hatred, too, yeah. with the Jets. But so he's got to thought it. Yeah. I mean, you guys are 14-2. and two. Did you ever look at it and say, you know, before that game especially, we're 14-2, and two, we're at home. Look at these guys. These guys were wagging. Uh, you know, th there's no way they're going to beat it. Did you look at it and just say, not that you disrespected them, but just yeah. like, we're we're a better team. We're more talented. I think I think that we felt like we were the more dominant team at that at that time. And this is why you know when people ask me about the Super Bowl that's coming up, why I feel like KC's in that in that situation where they just know how to win. We were better, right? We we're what? talent wise, we're a better team. But you get to a point, man, where teams just know how to win, right? No stupid penalties, no personal fouls, no taunting. All, all the, They just know how to win. They're just going to capitalize off your mistakes. And I look back on it now, like, those are the teams that win. So at the time, you're like, man, how did this happen? You look at the game, and Marlon McCree, who had the interception towards the end and got stripped, and, and they got it back or whatnot. And you look at it like, man, we were the better team. But teams that know how to win in these situations just do. And that's what I think we have in this game this week. I think you look at San Francisco's roster, they are a more talented team. They've got a lot of star players on that team. Kansas City has the quarterback. They've got that guy, and the thing they've got on their side is the experience of being here and having done it. And so if Kansas City wins, I think we're going to look back at that and say they had a guy who's done it before. That's how they, that's how they beat a better team, right? I, they, they didn't sort of have those mistakes in the most critical moments I, in the I biggest don't even game. I think Kansas City should be here. You know, they're not not no, disrespecting wise. Yeah. I'm just saying no, that Baltimore, the, if they took Baltimore was a better yeah. team. You know, there was a couple teams that were better than them. Like we go back to just know how to win. Okay. Talent wise, it was other teams better than them, and they found themselves back in the same same situation. That reminds you of 06, though, the way Baltimore did not feel like yes. they were ready going offense. Yes, kind of got caught up in that game. Then Mahomes took that first drive down. Yeah, yeah. it was it was it was very much so. I mean, I came out the gate. I remember I had a big hit on Tom early on in the game. I I hit him you know yep. behind. And so they kind of started the tempo off. So I feel like the momentum was swinging our way. And then one mistake, two mistakes. I think we had a, a, a personal foul. One of the guys hit, but another guy extended, you know, 15 yards. And they capitalized. They scored in that drive, I believe. So it, it was just, it was so similar when I'm watching that game. I'm like, man, PTSD. How, much, how much would you be finding a league?
league now with all the new rules that protects quarterbacks. Oh man, I'd be playing for free. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad. It's really. It, 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 you know, I'm a former quarterback, and I I think it's BS. I think it's BS the way they protect them. I I, I understand them trying to take care of guys, right? The oh, helmet, the helmet itself. I mean, I remember when like guys like Heinz Ward would come and try to break your draw on the cra- on a crack, crack back block. They, right? they took that away. They took that away. So I the the, um, the head to helmet stuff and crack back. The main parts of getting a guy hurt, I think that they're getting over protective where they're taking the passion and love away from the game. Because let's let's be honest, man, that's this is why the country love football, man. The violence, the physicality of it. You start taking away these emotions and stuff, you're taking away also from the fans. And that that part I do worry about a little bit. You mentioned the love of football and, and uh as Beatle said, we talked with Michelle Beatle earlier and she said we were talking about the Chargers, the LA Chargers. She said, Well then two people I know who care about the L.A. Chargers, say this. I think of you, I think San Diego Chargers. Mm -hmm. Is it strange for you to think Chargers, Los Angeles, and is there a, a connection? Do you sense any connection between that community and the Chargers? I um, let me let me tell you the people that just don't know and understand. So San Diego fans and people of San Diego just don't like L.A. people. That's where the whole thing started at from this jump. It wasn't even – they could have went to Orange County. They could have went to Irvine. They could have went to anywhere else. They could have went to Vegas. And they got less hate than they did moving to L.A. because the San Diego just did not want people – didn't want the fans to migrate up to L.A. Right. And so there was a problem. I remember when in the smaller stadium, that soccer stadium they had, it was 50-50. And there's only 40,000 people there. It was 20,000 other people's fans. Mm-hmm. Now, when you drive to Justin Herbert and they started gain that, regain that fan base back, you saw people migrating up there again and then also building a new fan base. So – I'll tell you the, the hardest thing. So I announced a 2017 draft in Tennessee, right? And that's when they just had went to the L.A. Charges. It was it in Tennessee, right, 2017? Uh, yeah. So I walked out. Mind you, the draft is already nerve-wracking in the first place, right? There's 100-plus thousand people out there, and I don't Took care. Over who, that that city. was a big yeah. one. <laughs> I, don't care, I don't care yeah. who you are. You're ner- it's nerve-wracking. So I walked out, and I was like, don't give me a hard name and say L.A. Charges because I'm, I'm going to mess this up. I know it, right? So I had to see her at Right? I was like, okay, that's not terrible. And then I had to remember walking out to 100,000 plus people to say Los Angeles Chargers and not San Diego because I think that we're all used to saying. I still do it today. Yeah. I still do it. San Diego Chargers. Yep. So I was like, I got that down. I think it took about, a, for me personally, about a good two years of, okay, the team is in LA now. This is the LA Chargers, and this is what it's going to be, and they're not going back. What was better? The San Diego Super Chargers fight song or the Trick Daddy Take It to the House on Touchdown? <laughs> <laughs> I like the Trick Daddy Take It to the House on Touchdown. Oh, oh. man. But LT was scoring all them. What do you have, 21 that day here? Yeah. Jesus. I I like. I don't know. I like that, that San Diego. You do? Super, yeah. 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 We've, got an edit. We've got an edit that I hope uh, T-Bone back in Boston could pull for us that we made when the Chargers <laughs> moved because we needed to edit the songs that we could continue to keep playing. Greatest anthem of an NFL team of that era mm-hmm. ever. Um, but I was going to ask you, as a player, oh, hey, here we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here we go. San Diego, Super Chargers of Los Angeles. <laughs> y'all, y'all didn't tell me I had a remix version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, we had to Just do it. it <laughs> Someone had to do it. No one else is going to do it. We had D Nice on it. D Nice did it. Look, I just need to know who did that Who, who did that voiceover from that. That's what I need That'll to be know. our friend Hardy. Okay. Uh, who took care hey, of it. Hey, Hardy, good job, Hardy. <laughs> God. He's not with us anymore. Yeah. He left our show. He went to morning. So. Okay. But uh, I was going to ask you someone who played against, competed against, Bill Belichick, his head coach. Yeah. What did you make of him? Uh, I, it, we think it was a firing. He was pushed out. But yeah. what did you make of him no longer being the Patriots head coach? I think it was it was time, right? Um, they gave him an ample amount of time when Tom left to see what he got, what he can do on his own, what he can work with, and it just didn't go well for him, right? He didn't win a lot of games after Tom left. He wasn't as good anymore. So I think the um, that Patriots way kind of died out with with Tom leaving because he was a big part of it. Culture. Um, the yeah. culture, the, what he established in that building, the the levels that everybody else had to raise there, just walking around. Like, I can imagine being late to practice or being late to the, a, a film set session or meeting and Tom Brady sitting there. You just, you can't do it. And so, because he's always on time, he's, and he's much bigger name. So I think that the, 
when it left, they had to make a decision. And I and I got a really good relationship with uh you know Mr. Kraft with Robert Kraft. I mean we we talk um, quite often. A couple times a year we'll get together, um, post SBs and stuff. We'll meet up and just talk. And uh, I, I I don't think they wanted to do it. I th- I think they had to to, to establish you know the new regime there with with uh, with Mayo. What's he talk talk to you about? Mr. Kraft, so like uh, picking former players, and I know he yeah. does this a lot with guys and you know artists, and tries to tries to get everybody's opinion on things. What is he talking he, about? He, that's what he did. So he he asked me really um, of how close we were with with uh, Dean Spanos and the ownership, okay. and um, he was telling me, and this was this was uh, one of the this is why I love him to death, man. To be honest, um, he said that he the reason why he loved owning the team, one of the biggest reasons is because he get a chance to be around the guys. And uh, when his wife had, had passed away, that guys were going to say Al Wolford, all these guys were going to sleep at his house, sleep at his home, because, uh, you know, he, he just said he wouldn't have made it if the guys did mm-hmm. So he said that was the best part about him owning a team. And, I, and I, that, that speaks, that's why they, you know, got rings, right? Because you can tell how he is with his with his team and his players and how much he cares, man. And I, I just, you know, I appreciate the time that I get the to spend around them when we when we do. Well, you, you look at uh, some of the coaches now in the game, former players. You know, D'Amico Ryan's. Mm-hmm. You know, had a great uh, great season with Houston. Gerard Mayo is taking over in New England. We'll see what happens here. But some of the former players are getting, you know, buy-in from guys. Is that the trend we're heading in? And and if so, what do you think players, current players, are looking for? From coaches, uh, it, it's definitely a trend, and um, somebody had to break the mold. And I always said this: that if a former player with as much knowledge of of game knowledge and actually you know watching film knowledge can fill figure out a way to be a coach and then manage a team, because that's the biggest thing. It's not how much you know about the game. It's it's you're you're a manager of personalities, you're a manager of coaching staff, you're a manager of front office, and you kind of got of you know run traffic with everyone. And I was just saying the other day about Antonio Perez, like that's going to be his, his biggest hurdle, right? He's, he's smart as hell as far as knowledge of the game. He played it. The players will play for him. Now he has to learn how to manage a team. That's, that's what, so that's why they brought in Marvin Lewis and kind of built him a, a, a little, I guess, what, what do you call it, like a staff of people mm-hmm. around him who can help him and direct him. You do need the guidance, yeah, because it, it is somewhat new. Yeah, you know? it, it is, and, and that's, that's the biggest part. But so, I like the Crosby went to bat for him and said, you know, I'm, get me out of here if he's not the coach. He, and if you by the way, the Crosby was the only vocal one. There was yep. about 10 guys. That's what they said. Devontae Adams, there were like a lot of, there were about 10 guys who didn't get mentioned, who I know personally in the media, that went up to, went up to uh, uh, Davis, Ms. Davis, and said, look, we're out. If you guys make another bad decision like we did, we just we're, we're going to ask for a trade. It was multiple guys, and so uh, I think that you needed someone to break the mold. D'Amico Ryan, all these guys did. Mayo, if they start having success, you're going to see more more former players that go through the coaching rankings, right? Assistant linebacker coach, linebacker coach, assistant DC, DC, and then get that head coaching position because they're winning. All right, we got one more thing to mention. We're letting them go. We're letting them go. We've we've got tweets. People have tweeted us. T Bone just let me know. People on TV back in Boston across New England have noticed the tattoo on your neck, which reads, so what's it say? Finish Strong. Oh, Finish Finish Strong strong Friday. We have a thing on this show called Finish Strong Friday. It's a Finish Strong Tuesday this week. (laughs) It's Sean Merriman. That's one of our things around here. Finish strong. Sean, you gotta thanks, have, buddy. You gotta have you gotta have a promo. Hey, it's Sean Merriman for Finish Strong Fridays on Zolak and Bird. We'll bring it back Friday hey, to start hey, the show. Hey, might have to. Hey, I might mean, have, no, have to. Let's do it. Great one. Sean Merriman, great to have you here.